Hey guys, up here in the Rocky Mountains again. Found a couple more wild edible plants I want to show you guys. This right here, these white flowers, it's called Yampa. Let's see if I can show leaves here. What some of the leaves look like. It's got hollowish stems. Oops. Tiny white flowers. And the important part of this plant, the edible part, is the roots. And they're high in carbohydrates. So they were important to the Native Americans. They were actually used as a currency by some tribes. And I'm going to hand off the camera and dig some up and show you guys. It's a good example of a Yampa tuber. Almost like a peanut looking shape. There's usually two of them on there. It's got a second small one right here. There's usually two little peanut looking tubers. They're really high in carbohydrates, real healthy, sustainable. And you can dry those for storage or you can eat them raw. And we finally have some wild strawberries coming up. Leaves of the wild strawberry. The leaves can be used as a tea, I forget, for some type of medical herbal use. But, you got little tiny strawberries. small but they're really sweet real tasty okay and over here we have some fireweed four main petals up here they tend to be a purplish color magenta leaves, long thin leaves, and the younger stalks you can boil and cook like asparagus, the older stalks you can peel the outside around the white inner core and eat that raw, or you can uh, cook the younger leaves, boil them for a few minutes to uh, tender them up a bit. So generally you want to cook it a little bit. These ones are just starting to bloom it looks like. Another mushroom I wanted to show you guys. Here it is believed to be King Bali. It's a little bit dried out and discolored a little bit. But the King Bali's tend to get big fat bases like this. Have some of that brownish colored stem. The undersides have like a sponge like texture. And they're uh, yellowish to orange. And the tops tend to get a brown, reddish brown color like that. Probably wouldn't want to pick this one to eat. It's a little big and it's obviously been picked at by bugs and a little dried out and discolored. But you want to find the, the smaller ones. Find the s smaller ones that are uh, 
a little bit shorter, not quite opened up fully yet, and evened out. And you can saute those up just like any other mushroom, cook them like portobellas. <clears throat> and they're real tasty, but yeah, don't pick ones that look like that. I'll see if I can find a younger one for you guys. Make sure you don't get the fly or garrix mixed in with it. Alright, so that's King Belit. Here's a fly or garrick mushroom. It's a little bit dirty. It's got the red cap, the white spores on top. Let's see under there. There's a younger one over here. A little fruit fruit sprouting out. Mostly covered in the white spores, but you can see the red under there. And several of these growing up in here. Those ones are kind of old and discolored. So yeah, considered poisonous. That's flyer gook. Here's a poisonous mushroom to watch out for. It has a red cap, kind of like the flyer gook, but doesn't have the white spores. It also tends to cave in in the middle, get that little dip in there. This is called Rasula. bright red purplish cap that dip in the middle no white spores that's poisonous so keep it away from your bolets or edible mushrooms